Welcome to the Great Art Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Wesley. I wouldn't exactly call this the trailer or the pilot episode, but I know you have questions about what this whole thing is and what content will include. I had the same questions. I've rewritten this introduction a few times and even put one version into post, but those drafts didn't feel right, not exactly genuine. I found myself playing a character of what I wanted you to believe. Fancy professor stuff, expert kind of guy, intelligent art officer. Had to refocus. Had to remind myself that my fears get a voice, but they don't get a vote. It can be difficult to put yourself out there. Just like when you hang up a work in a show, it's suddenly not yours anymore and will be justly criticized. I want to speak heart to heart as my authentic self with you, the listener, not towards you as in a lecture or some know it better posture. There's too much of that in the world already. Just like with great art, this project needs to be done with care and honesty, crafted over time versus getting it done in time, packaged and shipped with a shiny brand. Again, too much of that in our frantic, always late, need to work more culture. I like to tell my own students that their work should be slow cooked, like that amazing wrapped in your grandmother's blanket Thanksgiving dinner, or some crazy good smoked all day brisket. Hours over minutes, days over hours. Great art is parented and loved. I want to practice that philosophy with you here in this podcast. Give you something meaningful. Quality, standards, and conventions last. Clickbait doesn't. It's the same in aesthetics. So I can easily answer the last of my three questions. Who is the target audience? This podcast is for you, the everyday man or woman. Sure. Many of you will be art students, artists, art historians, and a host of other art-related professionals, designers, illustrators, maybe one day architects, writers, and musicians. But really, this podcast is about the amateurs and the interested laypersons, not PhDs and not the tenure track. We all have some appreciation for the process of searching for, discovering, and experience fine art. We're born into it. We are all art consumers as active protagonists or laid-back casual pacifists. Metaphorically, you can wade out into the stream or watch it trickle by peacefully. I advocate that the former is the better life choice, maximize the joy of living well. You and I, because you are listening, already acknowledge there is something special about art and the community that moves about the art world. Why else would there be so much attention given to art if it wasn't important? Millions of people seek out art in fancy places and impromptu pop-ups on derelict buildings and prestigious institutions. Billions are spent in its creation, consumption, and trade. NFTs are now a thing. It's a simple question with a huge, complicated answer. We'll think about, debate, and digest with each episode. How and why art is important, and what makes or breaks it from simple and mundane to inspiring and great, emphasis capital G. Though our professional roles might vary considerably during our lifetimes, we all experience art as a viewer for its entirety. Most people, at some point, dabble with paper, canvas, stone, or metal. We certainly have all dreamt big creative dreams. What I really mean to say is that our collective experience is the same, regardless of our origin, our color, our sex, and our faith. We are born into a dazzlingly complicated and short-time existence. We share the same curiosity about the arts and its place in the world, and our place in that world. Differing experiences and perspectives are really important, but even I feel disregarded sometimes in museums or galleries, where pompous attitudes and aristocracy continue to shun non-desirables. There's always a click to be found. That makes me sad. Art is for everyone, after all, isn't it? Like, where are all the minorities and women artists, for starters? Do they never make great art? And when did artists forget how to make stuff well? Genius can't always come from drips and smears, or randomize intentional mishappenings. I do have eyes, you know. Rational criticism makes fair game of not just parts of art history, but all of it. Everyone has their gut reaction to art as soon as they experience it. But once you get past that gut check, that gut feeling that hits you immediately and viscerally, 
then we have a responsibility to consume that art in an intellectual and conceptual manner. It should be detached. Other things bother me, such as how many decades of training it really takes to be an accomplished realist. Does value always mean whatever you can get paid for? So many times I felt like the art world peddles lies. Ugly things can't be beautiful every single time just because so-and-so created something, or found something, or left it there to sell to quote-unquote connoisseurs. Now don't get me wrong, being a super fan can be great, but let's talk baseball for just a second. You can't say your team deserved the World Series pennant trophy if they didn't make it into October. You can't win games by having a perfect defensive game, or get run striking out. There are times when objectivity and rationality just don't exist, or don't seem in certain zones of the art world. It took me time and maturity to believe that any art is better than none, just that great art should always be flying towards the stars, not racing towards the sewer. Call me a humanist, I guess. That phrase I used, art world, bothers me. It's a phrase that can be tricky to define and changes where and when you go. The art world of the college art department is wildly different from the art world of Paris, or those inside Christie's or Sotheby's. It's likely very different in your own home art world over mine. But there's common themes that unite us all, and that unity is special. I think I'm touching upon the why. Why this media, this format, why this podcast? I don't live in New York City or some other megalopolis. I was born in a small town in the central San Joaquin Valley of California. It's an agricultural region that feeds millions of people. We have fantastic natural foods and are near the world-famous Sequoia and Yosemite National Parks. We have trees, open space, and farms everywhere. Water is habitually problematic, and drought cycles are in decades, not years. The Pacific Ocean, within two or three hours of driving, Add a few more, and you're in L.A. or San Francisco. It's a wonderful place with mild winters and really hot summers. Total Zone 9. It's a fantastic place to raise a family. We have many immigrants and are rather multicultural according to the census. We have some very yummy international eateries, too. Sadly, however, my home is not exactly the most ideal center of Baroque sophistication circa 1630. There might be tens of us who can really define what classical realism is. And no, Mr. Marlarkey, it isn't a contemporary style with retro appeal like Chrysler's PT Cruiser. Although I admit that's some grade-A world-class snark. Art doesn't feed anyone, clothe or house you, or make house payments, or magically make power bills disappear. Wish it did. What I can say, art is actually without a doubt in a tangible sense, worthless. But counterintuitively, art is priceless because it's worthless. It has value because it's valueless. We'll get back to that Doctor Strange a little later, believe me. I wondered as a kid why farmers didn't care about art. I nearly laugh out loud at that super innocent thought. But joking aside, really, they should. And you should too if you don't. Art, especially great art of high caliber, feeds our souls in a way that food cannot protects us from the chaos of the natural world, reveals our fears, failures, and tragedies. Art can be frustrating, aloof, pompous, bizarre, and outright grotesque. It can acknowledge our accomplishments, remember those we've lost yet still love, and call us to be greater than ourselves. Great art fills a hole that we aren't courageous enough to confront on our own, a sorrowfulness, a loneliness we can't explain away with scientific inquiry. Great art puts us on the steps towards God. My local community admits the almonds, garlic, cotton, and dairies needs all of these vitally important things. That means it needs art. Now I finally fumbled my way into the second question's answer. I want to foster the inquisitive spark to tell my peers, my students, friends, and family that art is important to all of us including those farmers and busy moms, children, academics, etc. Everyone. If we don't have the community or society we wish to grow and live, we must create it from scratch, 
We deserve it as much as anyone else. You might be wondering at this point, who is this guy? I've been an adjunct instructor for nearly a decade, at least at the time of the recording, and have numerous shows, private commissions, and a couple of seemingly impressive publications on my resume. I've taught hundreds of students the fundamentals of drawing, and hundreds more in art history and art appreciation. I even paid for a dryer once with money from selling some of my own art. I can show you if you ever come over for dinner for an off-hours guest recording. I hold a master's degree in drawing and painting, and no matter what California State University says, I'm emphasizing sculpture too. And then, of course, there is the dusty, almost there double major in classics. You could say I went all in on full unemployment. By day, 8 to 5, I'm a system and web administrator. Servers, websites, Microsoft, and Linux stuff. IT nerd skills pay those very real bills I mentioned earlier. But in my heart, I'm a teacher and an artist. I try to draw and paint stuff too. Sometimes even adequately. My first artistic endeavor was taking a purple jumbo crayon and making a set of three 60-foot stripes along my parents' yellow stucco ranch house. Complimentary colors on an epic scale for a four-and-a-half-year-old. It was destiny. I think my mom's recognition of artistic intent and encouragement might have been the single most loving act she did for me. Maybe it was a curse. The more you see and understand, the more accurate your observations and sensitive eye the more you are able to see and understand, or don't understand, never ends. Making art should be considered the most dangerous profession. Two cups agony, one half cup ecstasy. Great art always has a bit of masochistic spice baked right in. I'm interested in discovering and seeing great art and experience that wow moment when your brain just can't understand something utterly and savagely beautiful, perfect, and sublime. That moment is transcendental, a moment when you become greater than your singular self, and art gets you there. This podcast explores that experience, so I guess that is the content of this podcast, just like the title, Great Art. Then there are all the pragmatic questions like, why are certain pieces considered impressive and special, why others are just objects someone made, found, or purchased? Why is there so much discussion about certain types of art or particular artists? What's up with the celebrity of certain names? Where does beauty and aesthetics fit in? Are those even important in the 21st century? I want to explore these concepts in these podcasts, but not from the academic desk. Sure, I'll have to do my research and extra reading, know the dates and the historical context. That, of course, is important. The ultimate goal is to identify and catalog the shared attributes of great art, not just the greatest hits you'll find in any generic art history book either. I want to survey art that continues to impress us, from the unknown ancient sculptures through modern living masters. There's another one of those tricky phrases. What does it mean to be a master? We're not exactly Jedi. I'll get into the physical material aspects of art making that I know about, and take some big guesses at the methodologies of those I've brushed up over the years. To my students, it's so important to understand that great art just doesn't magically and mysteriously spring from the mind's eye in the form of a miracle. The myth of genius should, by now, long be defunct. I mean, we've had the internet for a while. Great things are conceived, planned, and created over time with labor and love, sweat and tears, Maybe a little bit of blood and sacrifice, too. It must be cultivated, yes, as a craft. There's no reason why you can't love that process and enjoy it, too. Like I said, it's not easy. We'll get to the bottom of the fundamentals. You have to start somewhere and build up. Things like how does a stretcher bar actually work? And what does ecole mean? Why are there so many French words when we talk about art in the Western tradition? Why does temper look so drastically different from oil and fresco painting? How does one build a correct armature? And what exactly is silver point anyway? A little bit of 101 for the uninitiated. A big inspiration for this podcast are other great content creators like Valdemar Nushak, filmmaker, Jason Arkels of The Sculptor's Funeral, James Earl of Amor Siendi, Tony Curran and Ted Minoff of Suggested Donation Fame, art historian Micah Christensen from The Bearded Roman and Forgotten Masters, and the talented people over at Rational Painting, just to name a few. 
These individuals are powerful thinkers. Please go watch and listen to their stuff, then come back to me when you have time. I do want this podcast to be a little different, not just replicating those channels and works. I simply can't compete on that level. Someday I might go pro, but likely not. But I can say with certainty that my perspective from my little city does matter and should be heard. It's important to me that I avoid any pretentious posturing on this podcast that art people can so often have. That sounds like a terrible stereotype, but I've experienced firsthand as one of those people. I'm not sure if it's a weird vibe or that there's too much drinking or maybe not enough. I recall my stepfather saying once after my biggest show, which was super successful, that he didn't know anything about art. I never felt more alienated from him in that moment, which was incredible considering all the icy and awkward moments we shared. So there's the third question again. In a very strange way, I think my approach for this podcast might be for those like him, that those that they think they can't view and talk about art because others shout them out or down at them or give them weird looks at openings. There is a first time for everything after all. We all fear the awkward moment coming in and then rushing to the corner when no one greets us or our go-to friend isn't there. I think everyone could benefit from being a little more welcoming. I think this project will help me with that, open up a little, relax, and embrace what is good, what gives me joy, experience art, talking about it, and making friends. So this project is for me too in that way. I left grad school years ago, and the better-than-thou attitude emotionally bruised me, wounded me deeply. I guess I asked too many uncomfortable questions, or I really just wanted to paint in the old, outdated ways, and that somehow offended people. I didn't get it. Still don't, but I need to move on from all of that. Art is, after all, by the people, for the people, and it cannot be owned by those in lofty, tenured offices alone. This podcast won't always strictly stay with visual art, but will also venture into other genres too, even things like copyright law, to help us frame issues art and artists face in the 21st century but the main focus will always be visual art. We'll be graced by my co-host, musical file and my lifelong art investor, my beautiful wife, Dora, and we'll have other guests, of course. I want there to be questions and answers, formal analysis, aesthetic philosophy, material views, anything else I can squeeze in that is a value add, and that includes your voice as well. So if you've ever wondered what makes great art so great, And why can't we ever get enough of it? You're in the right place. You can find us at gripfastart.works forward slash podcast. And of course, from Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and even our YouTube channel. If you made it this far, I hope I earned a subscription, a review, a comment, an email, anything up to a Rolls Eyes emoji. Please share with your friends. Oh, and of course, any enemies you might have too. It really does help. I sincerely appreciate the support. I would love to hear from you at our inbox, gripfastart.works forward slash contact. I really do mean that this is an open invitation for communications with you, the listener. If you agree or disagree with anything that I've said, let me know. I would love to hear your voice, and those comments would definitely be welcomed If you're feeling adventurous, you can always make a reply on your phone and send me the audio file. I'll share it in the next episode. The intro and outro music, The Wanderer, is performed by Dallin Pusey, original by U2. I hope to host you again here on The Great Art Podcast, and I'll leave you with these words, which I always found very inspiring, that the arts are of a divine order through the power of creation. Thanks so much for listening.